Let's give God a great hand clap of praise for today. Holly, oh yeah, that's it. I feel the, that's how you do it. He's worthy. He's done it for you. He's going to do it again. Let's give him the honor. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Be that people that praise their God. Be that person that lifts up holy hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Woo! I love it. I love it. He's worthy. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough today. Somebody feel that up in here? I feel breakthrough coming up in here. Miracle. Someone, you, you, all through the service, I want you just to be asking God for what you want. Listen for what he's saying, but ask for what you want because I believe God's going to be ministering to many of you today. Amen. 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 I just, ooh, it feels good in here. Turn, turn, turn your neighbor and say, invite me for Thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs> hey, just put them on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Invite me for Thanksgiving. I, I know you're cooking. Amen. Turn the other side and say, I don't eat chitlins. Turn the other side tell them, no, I don't eat chitlins. <laughs> I know it's a little early, but I'm just trying to hook you up early. That's all. It's part of my job as pastor. Amen. I want to welcome all of our guests that are first time here. I want you to know we are honored that you are with us and that you made Frontier Church a place to have fun in the Lord and to hear what God says. And I believe God has a word for you today. Um, we are in our series, uh, What Do You Do When Everything That You Touch Shakes, Rattles, and Rolls? What do you do when everything is falling around you, and 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 in and, and particular, I want you to write this title down um, for today's takeaway: What to do and not do when things seem like it's taking too long. What to do and not do when things seem like it's taking too long. Anybody ever had that experience before? You know what I'm saying? I knew I had that experience, man, when I was 18. I'm like, man, I'm ready to get married. I want to get married right now. Man, I'm so glad I didn't get married at 18. Lord, have mercy. I, I needed to season a little bit. I was like, I needed to just kind of marinate a bit. But, but, but finally, when it came time, it was like, yes, I got here to the altar. Praise the Lord. Some of y'all in that same boat right now. Just, just want that moment. Want that day. And, and, and have you ever wanted something so bad and it just seems like every time you're looking for it, it just seems like it's so far away. Has anybody ever had that happen to you? And you're waiting and waiting. And watch this. You're waiting and waiting on something and then it, it, you think it's not coming. So you go ahead and handle it yourself. You like, I know I'm going to throw me a birthday party, so I'm going to throw my own birthday party. Happy birthday, me. You got a cake and everything, and you walking in your house with your big old cake, and then we walk in the door, and everybody goes, surprise! What in the world? You done bought your own cake, ate half of it on the way home. <laughs> See, there, all of us struggle with the idea of when things seem like it's taking too long. God, I've been in this trouble too long. This this issue in my life has been going on, man. Man, my 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 watch stopped working. It's it's taking too long, God. I need you to do something because if you don't do something, I'm gonna do something. <laughs> and that is why I want to say, what to do and not to do when it seems like it's taking too long. I I, I want you to. We're gonna. I remember several years ago. Uh, I, I was in the Lord and, 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 and I was living on my own and I, I didn't have much money at all. I, I was probably, uh, I probably weighed about a hundred and yeah, about a hundred pounds. And, uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I ate air steak. Air steak was delicious. 
Um, and, and so there were times where I didn't have food to eat. I, I, I just was going day by day, but I've trusted God and I believed in God. And even though it looked like my lights might get cut off and my bills weren't getting paid, I trusted God. Somehow he's got to make a way. And I remember telling God, God, I'm getting hungry. And I like to eat around 630. See, you got to know how to talk to God. Amen. You, you don't just say, God, feed me. You got to say, God, feed me at 1230. You got to be specific about it. And I told God, I said, God, you know, I like to eat around 630. I'll skip lunch even today. But I'm going to wait to 630 for you to feed me. I said, I'm not going to ask anybody for any money. I'm not going to ask anybody to help me. I'm going to rely completely on you. Does that make you nervous a little bit? <laughs> Has anybody in been in that position where you want to trust God like that, but it ain't that easy? Hello, somebody. Do I got a church in here? Is it, are there real people in here that... See, see, you get to that point, you're like, I want to be a Christian. I want to I wanna be like they say on, on Sundays. I want to, well, listen, it's going to happen to you, and every day is an opportunity to trust him a little bit deeper. Hello, somebody. It may not come. You're thinking, well, God's just going to drop trust in me. No, 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 no. Trust has to be brought out of you. And the only way trust can be brought out of you, you've got to be put in a situation where your trust is necessary. Ah, I'm going to preach. I don't care what happens next. I'm trying to help somebody because you're saying, God, why, why, why? This person ain't helping me and this person ain't helping me. And you're looking in all the wrong directions. You need to look up and know that God is your provider. He knows the things you have need of even before you open up your mouth. He knows what you have need of. But then why would he go on to say, he says, go in your secret closet. He gave you the easiest formula to get results. He said, go into your secret closet where nobody can see you complain. Nobody can see you argue. Nobody can hear a word of doubt. And he says, talk to me in secret. Don't you hate when people have a problem with you and they're talking to everybody else? Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you you done, you ate the last thing, ate the last uh, slice of pie out the refrigerator, and you hear them in the other room talking about you. Who ate that last pie? You know who ate that last pie. <laughs> you know who ate that last pie. They got red teeth. You know who ate it. And everybody talking about you, but nobody talking to you. Hello, somebody. I remember going to the store, and my kids be like, Dad, I'm so hungry. Oh, I ain't never been this hungry before. It's like, they're not asking me. They're telling me. And as a father, I'm like, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, I'm going to get you a rice cake or a real nice There are times where we are struggling and instead of talking to God, we're complaining about what we don't have. And he gave us the easiest formula in the world. He said, if you go into a secret place, I, 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 just, just, just think in your mind, do you have a secret place? Before you affirm one way or another, I need you to take me seriously because the world gets it. The world knows how to seek evil and darkness and get a response from the devil. But it's the saints of light that have forgotten to easy go into your closet and shut the door behind you and talk to him in secret. And he says the God who sees in secret will what? Reward you in the open. If I need my bills paid, I go to my closet and then God will pay my bill collector. If I need a healing and I need people to see it, then I pray in secret and it pops out in the open. Hello, somebody. I'm trying to train you not to be uh, just observers of God's will, but doers of God's will. I need you to, to, to do something for me before God. If you're willing this week to step out of where you have always been 
and identify a place of prayer where you will go this entire week to ask. Don't, I'm not talking about your toilet. <laughs> no, 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 no. No more toilets, no more showers. And you can't kneel next to your bed because we know what's going to happen. I want you to go to a place that you identify and say, nobody, I'm not worried about who's talking to me or who's around me. Maybe your car. Maybe an office space. And I want you to try God this week and pray in secret so that he can reward you in the open. If you're willing to try God like that, would you stand to your feet and let me know? I need a movement. I need a church that has a movement happening. Yeah, yeah. See, see, if you if you just obey me, if you obey the word of the prophet, if you obey the man of God who's hearing from God, I'm telling you, if you would do it this week, some of the struggles you've been struggling with all year long are going to dissipate in this one week. One week is all it takes. You've been struggling on it. You've been worried about it. You've been saying, God, when, when, when? It's taking too long. I'm telling you, I'm going to cut the time short. Go to your closet. Go to your space and talk to him alone. And then watch. Come out of your closet like this. I'm looking around, looking for my miracle. Because I know I just talked to him in private. I fulfilled his command. We need a church that's doing the word of God. You can sit down if you can. And you've got all these people testifying with you. Now, y'all, y'all, I want you to turn around to the person behind you and say, well, well y'all can't do that because everyone will be looking at the person behind them. All right. Everyone look to your left or right and said, I saw you stand up. Turn to the other side. I saw you too. Now, this is, in, we, listen, listen, this is interactive Jesus. Hello, somebody. This ain't, this ain't History Channel. This, this ain't Lifetime. This, this is Jesus 101. Well, he comes to my house. He answers my prayer. He, he will come and meet your need where you are. I double dog dare you. I triple dog dare you. I, I, I say, I, I just... I believe God is waiting on us to get out of our comfort zones and stop saying what the problem is. Quit telling them all the problems. He knows the problems before they got there. He knew that that bill was coming. He knew you weren't going to have enough. He knew they were going to leave. He knew what they were going to say. He knew they were going to break your heart. So what up, What you going to do now? Oh, I got to go to my secret place because I don't know what's going to happen next. I need God to talk to me in a very, very big way. Everybody say big. big. That ain't how you say it. You got to go big. big. I need God to talk to me in a big way. I, I can't deal with small stuff. Don't give me no, no those, those little, little nuances. Well, I, I think it's God. I, I, I think that was a sign from heaven. Uh, uh, I can't really tell, but it seems like God, God don't play like that. Hello, somebody. People say, I saw an angel. I saw it out the corner of my eye. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You lied. You lied. You just lied. How do I know? Because if God wants you to see an angel, he ain't got to hide at the corner of your eye. Hello, somebody. He'll be right in front of you and say, hey, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. I done seen angels before. They don't play hide and seek. God doesn't play games with you, and he knows your life ain't a game. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Because some of you are like, is God real? Is he for real? Is this man telling me the truth? I'm telling you, God does not count your life as a game. God knows what you suffer through. God knows what you're going through. But God's saying, listen, if you but draw nigh to me. We draw nigh to the bank. Can I get a loan? We draw nigh to our friends, but you got to hear what I'm saying. You don't understand what I'm saying. 
We draw nigh to television. I'm just going to drown myself in this TV show. Ooh. Netflix was not made for your soul. HBO Max was not made for you to have peace. Hello, somebody. Comcast can't do it. Comcast don't have enough lines. They, they don't not have enough fiber. They, 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 they can't reach you where you are. But God can come where you are and drive home his answer to you in your secret place. What do you do when it seems like it's taking too long? There is a method to the madness. I understand you may have been going to church all the days of your life, but let this preacher tell you something new. Let this preacher tell you by testifying what I both know and what I have both seen that I can believe God and he will come through for me. I was sharing the story how I was hungry and I said, Lord, I'll wait. I'll wait until 6.30. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to ask anybody for money. And it got about noon and I started to get a little hungry. Started looking through my phone. <laughs> People I know that might have it if I need it. But, but I told God 6.30. Everybody say 6.30. It was only 12.30 in the afternoon. I'm already sweating my phone. I'm already ready for a, a, a quick dial. And so it gets about one, about two, three. My stomach's growling. Four. I'm thinking, well, the, if someone's going to do something, the bank's going to be closing in, in about a couple minutes here. It got to be 5 o'clock, and I'm going, wait a minute now. Now, God, I, I told you I'd wait to 6.30, but it's after 5, and ain't nobody showed up. So maybe I'm just being foolish. I know what I'm talking about because all of us have done that. We go, well, maybe God's going to help those who help themselves. God don't need you. What God does, he gets the glory for. He don't need your fingerprint on the miracle he puts in your life. If you commit something to God, know he can keep it. And I said, God, 6.30. It got about 6.15. Oh, no. I said, well, God, I'm, I'm being silly. I'm, I'm trying to use, I need to use wisdom. I'm, I'm, I'm not, man, I'm talking faith, but I need to be using wisdom. So I called up a friend and I said, hey, uh, is it possible you can swing by and bring me $5? Just, I mean, I'm sorry. And, you know, had to eat it, eat my pride and, and ask, could you bring me $5? How many know sometimes we choose $5 over God more than we should? And I said, would you bring me $5? They said, sure, no problem. I'm like, see? That was God. They were so kind. They were so nice. Man, I should, man, I don't know why I was trying to test God. I must have been trying to test God or something. And God don't like to be tested. That must be what it was. Oh, foolish me, foolish me. And all of a sudden, I hear car, a car pull up. And I'm like, oh, that must be them. And I go to open up the door. And while I'm opening up the door, I see one of the preachers from the church. Now, I'm in college at the time now. Listen to me. I'm broker than a joke. I mean, I could, I was so broke. And I'm looking, and here comes a preacher in his, in his attire pulling in my little apartment complex. And he's getting out of the car. I'm like, who does he know over here? He gets out of the car. He waves at me. I wave at him thinking, hey. I'm like, man, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> I can't wait for that person to get here because I had no transportation. Now, here's the problem. I wanted $5, but I had no way to get anywhere to buy for nothing with $5. I wasn't thinking in the spirit. I just wanted provision. Well, the preacher gets out of the car, and he has all these, these, these plates with silver on it, with aluminum foil, and he's carrying them, and he's bringing it to the door. And I'm like, where's he going? And he comes to my door. He says, hey, Brother Steve, how you doing? I'm like, how you doing? He goes, I'm doing fine. He said, man, listen, this is going to sound crazy. I was at home, and I was making chicken wings and, and beans. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. <laughs> When you used to eating rice and garlic bread, woo! 
chicken wings. He had plates of them, chicken wings and rice and beans. And I'm like, he was like, God told me when I was making this, I had to make two extra plates for you and to bring them over right now. Right now. Now watch this. I'm like, oh, and then I hear another car. And while I got one hand on the plate, the other person said, I got to go, Steve, but here's your $5. Whap! In my hand. And I got one hand on God's provision, and, and I got my other hand filled with man's provision, and I was shamed. I looked at my clock and it was 631. They were late. God was on time. Oh, come on. I need you just to understand how he operates, how he moves, because he will try you. Not, listen, he knows the level of your faith. The trying of your faith, the Bible says, worketh endure patience. And patience brings about endurance. The patience God wants you to wait on. When everything seems like it ain't happening fast enough, God's saying that's because you don't have enough patience. You want microwave food. You want on, you want, you want to, if that button, the channel don't change on cable fast enough, something wrong with cable. You calling the 1-800 number, it's just taking too long to change channels. And God says, I'm trying to teach you to trust me. I, I, I need you to trust me. No, no, y'all don't hear me. I, I, I'm telling you what the Lord Almighty is saying to the church. I need you to trust me. I know you think it's taking too long. But I'm telling you, I got everything under control. We get in trouble when we take it into our own hands. We go in debt. We lose our cars. I need my car fixed now. Man, this guy's going to pay, take, he'll take $25. This guy's going to take $300. i will go with this guy. Last time you saw your car. You've got to trust God. I want to show you, I'm, I'm trying not to take too long, but I'm, I'm, we're almost even out of time now, but I, th there's a word I want you to get, and it's you've got to renew your mind to respond like Jesus would. Renew. Write that down. I need to renew my mind to respond like Jesus would. And you're not going to know how to do that unless you get in the word. I, I, I want you to turn in your Bibles, please, to Exodus 32, verse 1. Exodus 32, verse 1. And I'm going to give you a scenario where this happened to the children of Israel. We're going to hit it and get out of Dodge. Send you home, get something to eat. But y'all better trust him. Because God knows how to get you where you need to be faster than you do. God knows your desires. Of your, listen to me, beloved. God knows everything you feel. He, he knows the dreams you have. It's, it's when we take things into our, our own hands that we think we got to make our husbands or make our wives act a certain way or else our marriage ain't going to go right. When God says, you need to love them like I love you. You need to quit trying to make them into a second you. You don't even like yourself. My God, there's two of you in the house now. Why do you think God made them different? Because you wouldn't survive with yourself. God had to make them so different from you. Because if they were just like you, y'all be dead years ago. I'm the man. No, I'm the man. I'm the man. You the man. I'm the man. You the man. I'm the no. God said, "Listen, you the man. You the woman. Just, just chill. 
I did it on purpose. I know what I'm doing. I put you together. Quit trying to be, uh, uh, mirror each other. I put you to compliment one another. Hello, somebody. But God has taken so long. I just need to go find me another man. Find me another woman so I can just be happy. You're going to find yourself. And then you're going to get tired of yourself. And you're going to pop from relationship to relationship to relationship. And you're not going to be able to be married because you done broke what God tried to fix. Listen to me. Look at Exodus 32, verse 1. <laughs> I love this. And th Now, let me give you a little backdrop here, please. God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand. I mean, this stuff was epic. I mean, the Avengers ain't got nothing on this. God brought him out. He, man, he, he made the skies dark. He made the sea red. He, man, he had locusts and boils. And uh, he, was, he was tormenting all of Israel's tormentors. He was like, listen, you won't mess with him? I'm going to mess with you. And every torment represented a God that they worship. Just so they know that the God of, of the children of Israel was stronger than any of their gods in their nation. Every plague represented a God that he defeated. And so God brought them out with a strong hand. And they're like, "Woo! we out of bondage. We got gold and silver in our pockets. Let's roll. And they start rolling across the wilderness and kept going. And then all of a sudden, Moses says, God told me I need to go and get some instructions. Because I need, God says, we're, we're, you're a very important people and I need to go and give you God's insight. Because right now, we're just, we're, we're, we're still operating out of a slave mentality. We still crying about leeks and onions. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually, my wife made leeks and onions. They are really good. If you ever had them, they're pretty good. But, but God says, I got land flowing with milk and honey. And, and, and so all these people still had this mindset of, well, I, I'm going to keep looking behind me like it's better behind me because uh, this is taking too long to get to the promised land. Watch what happens. Moses said, I need to go up on the mountain and talk to God to get my instructions. This is where we hear the story of the Ten Commandments. Moses goes up on the mountain, but let me tell you what's going down at the base of the mountain. This is where we come in. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, who was Moses' brother. He was a priest. And said, uh, hey, 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 Aaron, uh, we need you to do something for us. Uh, we need you to make us some gods, um, which will go before us, um, um, and, and, and because this is the reason we need you to make us some gods because uh, uh, for as for this Moses, if you turn to the next verse, here, it says for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what become of him. Now, let me mind you, he was only gone 40 days. They've been in bondage 400 years. Well, Y'all didn't hear me. They're so, they, they've been in bondage so much longer that they didn't see 40 days is worth the wait. Come on, somebody. They, they were like, man, we out, we free. Well, I want it right now. I want all of it. And, and, and Moses was up on a mountain for 40 days. And so they went to the second in command and says, Moses, ain't, we don't know what to do it is. So here's what we need you to do. I need you to make me a God. Now, let me explain something so everyone understands. This is why we don't respond to what the world does. You can't react to your problems like people in the world react to their problems. You can't listen to music and it tell you how you're supposed to act when someone makes you mad and you think that's the way to behave. That is not the way to behave. It is not the way to act towards somebody. You can't listen to the world. Listen, the world is constantly trying to instruct you through your eyes, through your ears, and through words. You, the, I want you to think about today when you leave church, the music that you are allowing into your ear gate. What is it actually saying to you? What is it teaching you? 
Watch this. The rest of the world, just so you know a little bit of background here, the rest of the world felt like the way that you had a God was you had to have a symbol of some animal on earth in which that God would inhabit. So it, it would mean that if uh, you walked anywhere and they saw that golden calf, they knew that some God was with you. Why were they doing it? Because all the nations of the world did it. Everyone had a golden calf. Everyone had some kind of statue. And they paraded it out in front. Paraded it out in front. And, 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 and they're like, man, we don't know what's up with Moses. And we want one of those. But see, there was one thing they didn't understand. God planned something better for them. See, here's the funny thing. Here's what God, while they were complaining and wanting a golden calf so they can look like the rest of the world, the chapter before they even got into this problem, I want you to go to Exodus 31, verse 1 through 5. I want you, I want you to see what God was doing while they were impatiently not waiting. They wanted a gold calf now. I want it like I see it in the world. I don't want to, I don't want, see, let me tell you something. God ain't after your money. He's not trying to make you rich or poor. He's trying to make you holy. What do you do when someone cusses you out? That tells me how much gold you got on the inside. What do you do when you don't see a way out of no way, but then, but then you, 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 you begin to praise God in the middle of your trouble? God is trying to create character in you, not content. He ain't trying to put you in a BMW. If you want a BMW, get you a BMW if you can afford it. Don't go spend all your light bill, your food money on a BMW and then it break down and you can't even get it repaired. It costs too much. God's trying to get stuff to you in time that you can handle it. The children of Israel, while they were complaining, I want you to take a look what happened in verse 31. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, see, watch this. I have called by name Bezalel. Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and silver and brass and the cutting of stones, to set them and to carve them out of timber, to work with all manner of workmanship. The tabernacle, now listen to what he said, he'll make the tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is thereupon. What is that? That is where the spirit of the Lord dwelt. Upon the Ark of the Covenant. But they were so busy wanting to move too fast. They would rather have the same old goat of gold. Rather than wait for something that's never appeared in the earth. And while they were complaining, God says, I've already have a man ready. I'm waiting on you to wait. I'm wanting you to stop rushing and saying, God, I need it now. I need it now. I need it now. But to say, God, I trust you no matter what is going to happen. See, that's how God operates. I tell you that God did that for our family so many times, our church so many times, right when we needed it, that God came through. And I, I tell the story all the time of on Mother's Day, uh, 2017, God told me to ask the church for $80,000. That's what I said. <laughs> what? 
That don't sound right. How many feel like that's even right? I mean, just be honest with you. It's mother, come on, y'all don't have to be holy. I'm just telling you, I didn't think it was right. It's Mother's Day. I got to save this money. Mama hungry. We got all the in-laws in. We got to go out to Golden Corral. I can't be spending this money now. And I knew it. And God said, no, I want you to go out there and ask the church for $80,000 to buy the building across the street. And I said, but God, there, there's going to be a revolt. Because here I am giving out food certificates and I'm asking for $80,000. Here's a gift certificate, the Golden Corral. Now give me $80,000. It just didn't come out right. But how many know if we trust God, Sometimes it sounds crazy. God may say, just do, I want you to learn to just obey me. O-B-E-Y, obey me. Okay, if you can just catch that, obey me. And God said, just obey me. So I got out there, I was nervous and all that. It got to offering time. I said, hello church. Uh, God, glad to have all the mothers, all the mothers. Hey, hey, hey. Get certificate, get certificate, get certificate. Now I have a prayer request. And uh, I'm asking that uh, God told me to tell, to ask for $80,000 on this day. I just want to ask. And the church looked at me like I was 14 karat crazy. It was the most awkward silence. The crickets weren't even moving. Crickets were like... The tumbleweed stopped like. And, and I said, let's take up an offering. And we took up an offering. And I'm thinking, well, since God said it, that must mean I'm going to get it. And I said, they took the money to the back, service is over. And I sat down and they counted the money. I said, how much did we get? And they say, total? <laughs> you know it's bad when they say that. Total? No, half. What do you mean? Of course, total. <laughs> they said, total, uh, $1,000. I said, huh? <clears throat> Bishop, uh, $1,000. I said, that's less than average. I mean, we make more than that on a regular son. What happened? Uh, I'm sorry. What happened? Let I'm, me I'm, I'm get my voice under control. They said, that's it, Bishop, $1,000. And what do you do when you're in a situation like that? You, you know you heard God. See, here's what we have to do, ladies and gentlemen. I, all my leaders were looking at me like I was 14 karat crazy. My elder came to me and said, how dare you? I brought my mother to church and you ask my mother for 80,000 I'm ashamed why do you want anything else you've got a beautiful building you should just be satisfied why did you do it I said man God told me man <laughs> see sometimes you just got to tell people what God says you can't back it up you ain't got no proof you just got to say hey Hey, hey, that's what he said. Deal with it. I'm not going to make excuses for God. I don't know what happened, but I trust him. Oh, come on, somebody. I got $1,000 looking at me in my bank account. And I still trust him. So what I needed was not him to do something, but I needed to do something. Y'all better, y'all watch me here. Please, you're going to grow if you get this. I said, I need a dose of faith because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So right now I'm struggling. So what word can I get that can help me? So I opened up my Bible and I landed on this verse that said, the kingdom of heaven doesn't come by observance. 
Meaning, I can look at that bank account all day long. It'll still say $1,000. That don't mean that the kingdom of God is wrong. It don't mean the kingdom of God missed it. The kingdom of God ain't based on what you see. He said the kingdom of God does not come by observance, but the kingdom of God is in you. Oh, oh, y'all didn't catch that. It's like God turned the whole thing around and said, you looking at me. He says, this is a faith thing. I put the kingdom of heaven in you. So what are you going to say? So I stood up. I'm like, what? You mean to tell me that bank account shouldn't affect my feelings? How many will get affected by your feelings? How many know, come on, come on, my ladies in here, y'all know stability, y'all want, y'all want, live, and when money ain't right, things ain't right. Come on now. Our men start sweating when we know, I don't know how I'm going to pay that bill, and I can't say nothing to her, because I know it's going to go crazy if I say I don't have the money. And so I'm sitting there going, well, wait a minute. It ain't based on that thousand dollars. You mean I just got to, it's in me. So I said, I decree. Y'all didn't hear me. I opened up my mouth. He said, it's in me. I said, I decree that I will get $80,000 today. I agree with you, God. I don't need to see it. I believe. Oh, come on, somebody. We got to get out of that stuff of the world. I got to see it. I got to see it. Show me and I believe. Show me and I No, you live in the kingdom of heaven now. You better change your address. You've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of this glorious light. It operates differently. I said, I command that $80,000 to show up. Now, all I know is he said, get the building. I didn't know why. I went home. I sat down. I'm like, well, I trust you, God. My wife walks in. Hey, 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 Bishop. She calls me Bishop. Ain't that so sweet? Hey, Bishop. Hey, babe. She said, some man came to me at the service, gave me a business card. Said, give him a call today. I said, I've never seen this before. Who, who, is it somebody in our church? No, I don't know who it is. So I called the man up. man tells me, I was looking for a multicultural church because we're moving down in this area. So I came down to scout the land out. And I saw your website, so I decided to come and visit. But I didn't want to come down, so I sat up in the balcony. And when you made the call, for the $80,000. God told me, and what you don't know, sir, is that I am the owner of a Fortune 500 company. And I was just visiting this day. It just happened to be Mother's Day. And he says, God told me, whatever the church doesn't raise, you pay the rest. He says, Pastor, how much did you raise? He says, I'll cover the rest. We bought the building the next week. Come on, somebody. Come on. This stuff crazy. This stuff is like, what? And that same elder, oh, oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's a, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Did you feed your mother? What am I saying to you? We got to step it up. We got to obey God when it's inconvenient. If God said he'll do it, then don't keep going to secondary and second string. Amscot is not meant for you. Y'all didn't hear what I say. That pawn shop ain't meant for you. Listen to me. If God gave it to you, count that God gave it to you because he wanted you to keep it. Say, God, you gave me this, so I'm not selling nothing. You're going to have to give me more. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody in here. 
Because after today, this is it, baby. I may not say this again. You better get it while you're here. Believe God. Don't let time tell you what to do. God is not defined by time. I want everyone to stand to your feet, please. What to do and not to do. When it seems like it's taking too long, trust God. Trust the miracle hand of the Father who has been watching over your family and watching you and taking care of you. And he always comes through for you. You are here today because God came through for you. I promise you, if you just take a second and review your life, it's one thing after another that you, you may not have even known that it was God, but he did it again and again and again and again till you come to the knowledge that he's involved. That's why the Bible says pray. Not for his sake. He says, I know the things you have need of before you ask. He says, but when you pray and you get the answer in the open, then you know who sent it. Now it builds your faith. So it's time for closet time, ladies and gentlemen. Bow our heads. Father, I need you to, to make a move up in here. I'm talking from every young person to every person in this church. I need you to move in their life to obey your word to obey what they have read in the word of God so they can experience the kingdom of heaven on earth. You said in your word, and we, and we were taught it from kids, we got the knowledge, but we don't obey it. You said, our Father, which is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You made no distinction. The same thing should be rocking in heaven as it's rocking on earth. We ought to be rejoicing with cancer being destroyed, blind eyes being opened, miracles happening for our children and our families. God, no more will we settle for what the world told us we can have. We will look to you for our instruction. We're not going to build any more golden calves so we look like this church or that church or this church. But we want the one thing you made for us that was unique. It was designed for us. I need you to bless these people. In Jesus' name, to walk with the thumping authority that you gave them as believers. Let the thunder rain when they walk. Whether it's in a doctor office, whether it's in a school building, whether it's in a courthouse, let the thumping of their footsteps sound like thunder. May your miracle working power operate. I mean now. As soon as they hit that closet, God let loose. Anybody willing to let their faith go, God astound them. I know what I'm saying. And Father, we thank you. Now, if you're here today, ladies and gentlemen,